Climate change has been a major topic of discussion for years, but what exactly is climate change and how does it affect us? The climate on Earth has been evolving since the planet first formed about 4.5 billion years ago. Up until recently, natural factors were the main drivers of these changes. These natural influences include volcanic eruptions, shifts in the Earth's orbit, and movements in the Earth's crust known as plate tectonics. However, since the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, global temperatures have risen at an unprecedented rate. By burning fossil fuels and altering how we use land, human activity has become the dominant driver of global warming. Now, global warming refers specifically to the long-term increase in Earth's average temperature due to the buildup of greenhouse gases. Climate change is a broader term that includes other changes in the Earth's climate, such as shifting weather patterns, rising sea levels, and more intense storms. In other words, global warming is one key driver of climate change, but climate change covers a much wider range of impacts. But why is this happening? Well, to understand that, first we need to take a closer look at what is called the greenhouse effect. Certain gases in our atmosphere known as greenhouse gases trap heat and keep the Earth warm. This process is called the greenhouse effect. These gases such as carbon dioxide, or CO2, and methane, CH4, come from both natural sources and human activities. They allow sunlight to reach the Earth's surface, warming the planet, but then trap some of that heat as it radiates out, preventing it from escaping into space. While the greenhouse effect is essential for life on Earth, as it keeps the planet around 30 degrees warmer than it would be otherwise, human activities have greatly increased the concentration of these gases since the Industrial Revolution. This enhanced greenhouse effect is leading to accelerated global warming and climate change. To help me explain, we've set up this experiment. Here we have two bottles, both filled with some water, and we're going to investigate the effect of carbon dioxide, CO2, on air temperature in a closed environment. We'll measure the bottle's air temperature using these temperature probes. Bottle A represents the natural greenhouse effect, so it contains water vapour and a small amount of natural CO2. In bottle B, we're going to put in four Alka-Seltzer tablets, and when the Alka-Seltzer is dissolved in the water, CO2 is released and carried to the surface by small bubbles. As the bubbles reach the surface, CO2 is emitted into the air above the water, representing an environment with an increased concentration of CO2. To create the heat source, which will represent the sun, we are using this lamp, and we'll check on the temperature of both bottles in about half an hour. We can see already that after just half an hour, the bottle containing an increased amount of CO2 has a higher temperature. This is because the additional CO2 in bottle B traps more heat, preventing it from escaping into the atmosphere. This mirrors the enhanced greenhouse effect where excess greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere, like CO2, cause more heat to be trapped, leading to warming. The result from this experiment helps us understand how increased CO2 levels can lead to rising temperatures in our atmosphere. So how does this rapid warming lead to climate change? There are two main causes, human causes and natural causes. Humans contribute to climate change by releasing carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. In fact, there's more carbon dioxide in the air today than there has been at least over the last two million years. Over the course of the 20th and 21st centuries, CO2 levels have risen by 40%. Human activities that produce carbon dioxide include burning fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal. This happens when we drive our cars, use electricity or heat our homes. Deforestation. Forests play a key role in removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, so cutting them down increases the buildup of CO2. Plus, burning trees releases the carbon they once stored. Agriculture. Planting crops and raising livestock both release greenhouse gases. For example, livestock produce methane, which is 30 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide. And cement production. The manufacturing of cement accounts for about 2% of global CO2 emissions. Then we have natural cycles, such as the Milankovitch cycles and the El Nino Southern Oscillation, also known as ENSO. These can influence the Earth's climate by causing periods of warming and cooling. For more information on El Nino and how it influences our weather and climate, check out the link in the description. While these natural factors contribute to climate variations, they cannot explain the rapid warming we're experiencing today. Milankovitch cycles, for example, influence global climate over thousands of years. The overwhelming evidence shows that human activities are now the primary driver of global warming. So how do we know that our climate's actually changing? 
Here's one of our climate scientists from the Met Office, Lizzie, to explain. Scientists have been measuring temperatures at various weather stations around the world, both on land and in the ocean, for many years. Some stations even have data that goes back over 100 years. By compiling this data, scientists from organisations like the Met Office have found a consistent trend. Earth's average temperature has risen by about 1.3 degrees since 1880. For many, a temperature difference of 1.3 degrees Celsius doesn't sound like much. Can you explain why this is significant? Although a rise of just 1.3 degrees might not sound like much, it can have significant impacts on our weather patterns, leading to more frequent heat waves, stronger storms, and changes in rainfall that disrupt ecosystems and human life. Apart from temperature records, are there any other signs that indicate our climate is warming? Birds are migrating earlier and they're changing their migration routes. Sea creatures like lobsters are moving north to cooler waters. Plants are blooming earlier in spring. Greenland's ice sheet, which holds a significant portion of the Earth's fresh water, is melting at an accelerated rate. Global sea levels are rising and Arctic sea ice is thinning and shrinking in size. These various pieces of evidence show us that climate change is real and is happening right now. So what does this mean for all of us? Climate change is already having significant visible effects around the world. The earth is warming, rainfall patterns are changing and sea levels are rising. These shifts are increasing the frequency and intensity of heat waves, rainfall, droughts and wildfires. While it's true that the Earth has experienced warmer periods in the past, what's different now is the speed of the change. In previous warmer periods, these changes occurred over thousands or even millions of years, allowing species, ecosystems and human societies time to adapt. But today, the rapid pace of temperature rise is outpacing the ability of many species to adapt or migrate, leading to a higher risk of extinction. For example, the green sea turtle, whose nesting sites are threatened by rising sea levels, and coral reefs, which are bleaching due to higher ocean temperatures. Changing climate patterns also affects agriculture, making it more difficult to grow crops in certain regions and can have serious consequences for human health, from heat-related illnesses to the spread of diseases like malaria. In some areas, people have been forced to leave their homes due to extreme weather events or loss of resources. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, otherwise known as the IPCC, is a United Nations body that assesses the latest climate science. It brings together experts from around the world to provide reports on climate change, its impacts and possible solutions, helping policymakers make informed decisions to help combat global warming. The latest IPCC report highlights the stark difference between a 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius rise in global temperatures. At 1.5 degrees Celsius, coral reefs could still survive in some areas, but at 2 degrees, almost all coral reefs would be lost. Similarly, at 1.5 degrees Celsius, Arctic sea ice would still be present in some areas during the summer, but by 2 degrees, most of it would be gone. These temperature thresholds show us how crucial it is to limit warming. The extent of climate change we will experience depends on how quickly we reduce emissions of harmful greenhouse gases. Even if emissions were to stop immediately, some changes like rising sea levels would still be unavoidable. However, the faster we cut emissions, the less severe these changes will be. Check out the link in the description below to our Get Climate Ready pages on the Met Office website for lots of tips on changes you can make to help. And remember to hit subscribe so we can keep bringing you more explainers like these. And if you have any suggestions for topics, do pop them in the comments. And finally, if you enjoyed watching this video, then why not check out another video on the difference between weather and climate on our Met Office Learn About Weather channel.